Don and guard Ralph Jasnowskis won first team All-America honors and quarterback Pete Van was a second team All-America. All of Don and Pete's hard work certainly paid off. Here it is, football fans, the Collier's 65th All-America football team. At their position, these 11 men are the finest collegiate players in the nation. First, Don Hollander of Army holds down one end on the All-America team. The six foot two inch Hollander is only a second classman at West Point. Most of the opponents Army has faced this year agree that Don is the finest end they met all season. I think of him often because I think of a person that uh, was so gifted as a football player at uh, Aquinas Institute in Rochester, New York, as a freshman on the plebe team here at West Point, and then into varsity football as my prime receiver. He could beat people, he'd run right into them, and then fake them, juke them, and he's gone. Don had brilliant speed, and Don was one tough football player, both defensively and offensively. Forced to go to the air, Pete Van passes to Don Hollander. It's just off the fingertips, and Weaver intercepts to halt an inspired Army drive. Army had a fine six and three season but the damper was the 20 to seven loss to Navy. Pete Van had arrived at West Point a year ahead of Don, and although he had failed a couple of academic courses along the way and remained a fifth year, he couldn't play any more varsity football. So going into the 1955 season, Colonel Blake had a quarterback position to fill. He turned to Don Hollander, who had never played the backfield before. Uh, one day the, the phone rang and they Somebody came to the room and believed it, I guess, said, Mr. Hollander, uh, Colonel Blake wants to see you in his office. So I walked over to the office with Don, waited outside. Colonel Blake asked Don Hollander to change from All-American end to be the leadership quarterback for the 1955 team. Don came out and face was flush. The cadets, the officers, they thought it was a rather foolish move. And the press uh, said it was Blake's folly. And it seemed to be that way. He was a left-hander who passed underhanded, so actually he wasn't a good passer at all. But he was a leader. He had a couple of idiosyncrasies. One was, if a person's running down the field, Don would either miss him completely or <laughs> try and just boom, knock the head off, because he, he was that powerful, that strong. I always say I made about 20 tackles of him. Where they were like from behind because he was already five, four or five yards down the field by the time I got to him. And uh, tackling him was like tackling a horse. He wouldn't lay on the ground. He immediately got up swinging. He'd just get up like this, swinging his elbow, trying to get you, trying to hit you. And, uh, and puffing and snorting just like a, like a bull. And uh, when he come out over the ball, you know, most quarterbacks look, you know, they look around and they're real calm, cool, and collected, but he never was. He, he was an uh, impetuous guy, I think. Um, and I mean that in the best sense. He, he, uh, he wanted to lead. He wanted, to, he wanted his team to know that he was the, uh, the leader. And that's why Colonel Blake put him in that job. He turned out to be an awfully good triple option quarterback. Don was so proud. I mean, that's, that's where his, his leadership quality, I think, started to show that he was so proud that he was selected to lead the team. The season began well for the cadets and for Don. There had been victories over Furman, Penn State, Columbia, Colgate, and Pennsylvania. But there were defeats at the hands of Michigan, Syracuse, and Yale. When Army faced Navy in 1955, the cadets were the underdogs. On their record of five victories, one loss and a tie, the middies were a one touchdown favorite to take Army, sink the soldiers, and proceed according to plan to the Cotton Bowl. This is KDET, the voice of the Corps, 635 on your dial. We are fortunate indeed to have a brief message from our superintendent, Lieutenant General Blackshear M. Bryan. Now as the first piece of information, I remind you that at Crabtown, 
there is a football team that has what is known as desire. They had desire last year and had it to such an extent that I cannot believe that the best team won the game. The answer to Navy desire is fierce Army determination on the part of each cadet to have such spirit that your determination to win is transmitted to the very soul of your team. You can win and you will win. And I remind you that there is no substitute for victory. Beat Navy. I remember saying to the squad, I want to tell you it would be the longest walk of my coaching career if I were to walk all the way over after the game and congratulate the Navy coach on winning. With that, there was a pause. And finally, a, a lone voice spoke up. And he said, uh, Colonel, you're not going to take that walk tomorrow. That was Hollander. two qualifying items, in fine print of course, in Navy southbound orders. One, they had first to defeat the coaching genius of Red Blake and his staff. And two, they had to ruffle the calm of Cadet Don Hollander, a reformed All-America end who had maintained his coolness all year, positively refusing to give up despite some harrowing experiences in his first season as a quarterback. Lash on the handoff from Hollander. Boats to the outside, races down the sideline for 23 yards and a touchdown for Army. Chesnowska's kick is good. In one of the season's great upsets, Army stuns Navy 14 to six. Reporters in the locker room afterward quickly brought out the statistics. Don attempted just two passes, one intercepted and the other incomplete. The game went down as the greatest team victory in Army football history. At this moment, Don Hollander was the nation's shining star. We're all in, we're in, a, in the hospitality room. And in walks Don. We ask him, Don, you know, why aren't you with the team celebrating your, you know, your victory over, over Navy? And he says, well, he said, uh, why go there? He says, I'll see those guys all the time. He said, you're my family. This is where I am. And then came graduation in June of 1956. Don Hollander was awarded the Hughes Award for being the most valuable player on the 1955 football team. And maybe the award wasn't the most notable part of the whole thing. A mother embracing her son is undoubtedly worth more than any award that can be given. Thank you.